Now let's look at some distinguishing features between each one of these. Cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae, okay? When we look at the cervical vertebrae, okay, again, other than the size being smaller, all right, what I want you to pay attention to is this right here and this right here, okay? These are what we call transverse foramen, okay? This is one transverse foramen. This is another transverse foramen, okay? When you see these transverse foramina, right, these holes, essentially, are not present in the other vertebrae. You don't see them in thoracic or in lumbar, okay? It would be right here. Of course, it's not, okay? In the, in the cervical vertebrae, which is the vertebrae of the region of our neck, okay, we have these transverse foramen because the vertebral arteries pass through here. The vertebral arteries are the arteries that pass through your vertebrae, specifically the cervical vertebrae, and go up to help feed blood to your brain. When you see this, you know you're looking at cervical vertebrae. When we look at thoracic vertebrae, okay? Thoracic vertebrae, to me, honestly, easiest way to distinguish this one, it looks like a giraffe. And I always equate the long neck of a giraffe with the long region of our back, okay? And that means we've got the most vertebrae of these thoracic vertebrae. We have 12 of them, in fact, okay? So here, when we look, same structures, body, pedicle, transverse process, lamina, spinous process, okay? But you'll notice something else. When you look on the transverse process, you'll see this little smooth spot right there, okay? This little smooth spot right here, you'll see another one right here, okay? This is anterior, this is posterior. Remember, I'm holding it on the spinous process. Your thoracic vertebrae are where your thoracic cage resides, your rib cage. So in comes part of a rib, okay? And you'll see how this articulates very nicely right here, okay? When you see these facets or facets, these little smooth spots right here, essentially are where your rib cage articulates, okay? Or your ribs articulate. Another feature you'll see are these superior and inferior processes. On the superior articular process and the inferior articular process, you'll notice there is a face or a facet or a facet to them, okay? On the superior articular process, which is this big bump right here that kind of juts out of the bone, you'll notice that the facet or the facet faces posteriorly. That's what you're looking at right now. And on the inferior articular process, you'll notice that the facet faces anteriorly. Well, if I take two of these and I stack them on top of one another, you'll see very nicely right here that the superior articular facet of the bottom vertebrae and the inferior articular facet of the top or superior vertebrae touch together or articulate very nicely here. You can almost imagine these stacking on top of one another. And that works so nicely because one face is front, one face is back. When you see that anterior and posterior, pardon me, posterior and anterior facing facet, you know you're looking at thoracic. Then finally, we have the lumbar vertebrae. Now the lumbar vertebrae is usually identified because the body is so large. But just as I pointed out in the thoracic vertebrae, where we had facets that were facing posteriorly and anteriorly, here you'll notice that these are facing medial and lateral. So the facets here face medial on the superior side 
and the inferior articular processes have facets that face lateral. This way, when I take, again, another lumbar vertebrae and I slide this in, you'll see that it fits quite nicely. That's because on the superior vertebrae, the one that I'm holding right now, the inferior articular process has facets that face laterally. And on the inferior bone, you're going to see that they face medially. So I can slide these in nicely with one another. Again, most students just look at the size of this and they say, okay, we've got something that's quite larger than the others. Okay. But again, if you keep in mind, L1 and T12, right, in terms of the body size, they're relatively similar to one another. So if you look at these distinguishing features, again, medial facing, lateral facing facets on the lumbar vertebrae, posterior facing, anterior facing facets on the thoracic vertebrae, and the transverse foramen on the cervical vertebrae. If you look for those features, you'll be able to identify which region they're coming from.